Nordnet is the leading broker in Nordic countries by Nordic Stock Exchange trading volumes. They are the market leader in Finland, Norway and Denmark, and the second largest broker in Sweden. Currently, almost fifth of the stocks in Nordic countries are held in Nordnet. Also, nearly fifth of the population owns individual stocks. As these markets have been getting more mature, there is less growth opportunities left in the stock trading business, but there is still plenty of room to grow in funds, deposits and pensions. Here you can see the revenue breakdown by country. Revenues from Norway are the most profitable, as in the recent years, their growth skyrocketed in that country. Nordnet managed to grow customers even during the 2008 recession, as online brokers were still brand new in the market and they kept stealing market share from traditional banks. However, now as the online broker market is more mature, going forward, I would expect it to be difficult to grow customer numbers during recessions or there might be even some decline. The recent investing boom had the most positive impact on Nordnet's margins as they more than doubled revenues while operating expenses stayed almost flat. As these online brokers accelerated the growth rates by stealing the traditional bank's market share over the past 20 years, I just wonder how much more room there is left for additional growth as everyone already knows them. I think going forward, the customer growth will mainly just come from the next young generations choosing to invest more in online platforms. In Sweden, which is the largest market, customer growth already stagnated in 2022 and small decline in revenues. In Norway, they make by far highest profit margins as the customer growth exploded during the pandemic. However, in 2022, growth already slowed down significantly. Similar story in Denmark with impressive growth, but their revenues are already down in 2022. Finland was already growing fast prior to the pandemic, but then the COVID investment boom growth wasn't quite as aggressive there as in other markets. In Finland, there isn't any other online trading platform with local language customer service than Nordnet, so it has been historically very easy market for them to grow. I'm actually surprised they are not more profitable in Finland as trading costs are quite high. For example, buying a US stock from Nordnet will cost Finnish customers 15 euros plus currency exchange fee on top of that. Also, customer growth rate slowed down in 2022 and revenues were down. Historically, before the investing boom, net savings inflows have increased customers' assets between 5 to 10% annually. Nordnet's existing customer base is peaking at the 30 year old customers, still, they do have plenty of over 45 years old higher net worth customers as well. Nordnet also has higher number of passive investors who never trade and mainly just put money on low margin ETF products. In the fourth quarter of 2022, less than 30% of clients made trades. That's why Nordnet and Avanza are making less revenues against their customers' savings than Flatex Dekiro or interactive brokers. If there won't be competition from deposits in 2023, Nordnet estimates making 1.8 billion Swedish kronas of income only from the liquidity portfolio. In 2022, they made total operating income of 2 billion kronas, so only the liquidity portfolio would generate almost as much profits as the entire business made in 2022. However, like I said earlier, this will boost the short-term profits, but at some point there will be more competition from customer deposits in Europe and then the brokers will need to start passing through some interest to their clients. So currently customer savings are 64 billion euros. I'll assume that the stock market will be on average 10% below the current levels over the next decade, leading to average balance of current customer savings of approximately 58 billion euros. I expect the revenue take rate to be 0.55%, leading to revenues of 317 million. Average net income margins will be 30%, leading to average earnings of 95 million from the current customer savings capital over the next decade. Then I expect customer growth rate to be 3% annually in line with Avanza, but the revenue from new customers will likely be around 3 times lower, leading to annual growth rate from new customers of 1%. However, as they are also expanding in pensions and mortgage lending, I'll expect it to accelerate growth rate for additional 2%, leading to total growth rate of 3%.
over the next decade, I assume average 0% annual stock market appreciation, and after that, the stock valuations will grow at 5% annual rate. Customers' net inflows should be in line with Avanza, and I assume it to be 5% annually over the first decade, and then to slow down by 1% each decade after. It is in line with Nordnet's historical customer inflows between 5 to 10 percent prior to the pandemic investing boom. However, previously large chunk of the inflows were people moving their assets from traditional banks to Nordnet, and going forward, I expect less of that, leading to slightly lower annual net inflows. As the customer savings is not linearly correlated to revenues, and over time the revenue take ratio has been trending down. I expect that going forward the revenue take rate from customers' assets will decrease at 2% annual rate in line with Avanza. Nordnet is currently paying out 70% of earnings in dividends and the rest are used to strengthen the balance sheet. I assume the 70% dividend payout over the next decade and then increasing the dividend payout to 90% after. So the combined growth rate will be 6% annually over the first decade then it will actually increase to 9% over the next decade, as I include average 5% stocks appreciation, and after that the growth rate will steadily slow down. They also do have 350 million euros of excess cash, which will likely be mostly kept on the balance sheet to support the future growth. But they could use some of it for strategic buybacks or acquisition if there was an opportunity for it, so I'll discount it with a 50% discount rate. I'll get a valuation of just under 2.3 billion euros compared to the current market cap of 4 billion euros, which leads to 44% thousand potential. Nordnet is currently fairly priced for 7% annual return. Hello there. If you want to see my full industry analysis of online brokers, well, I value five different companies and then I'll disclose the investment or trade that I made Check out this video here.